Hi, Paper Girls, Andor, She-Hulk, Halo, The Sandman, Ms. Marvel and more make their debut, while Game of Thrones, Stranger Things, The Boys, Westworld and Bridget in return. Plus it's the end as Better Call Saul, Killing Eve, Ozark and The Walking Dead reach their final season. The Witcher, Blood Origin, Netflix The Witcher, Blood Origin is a prequel to the Paper Girls. Prime Video Stranger Things fans should check out this TV version of an acclaimed comic about 80 seconds teenagers caught in a time-traveling war. The She-Hulk, Attorney at Law Og. 18. Disney Plus Orphan Black Star Tatiana Maslany is Jennifer Walters, a lawyer with green superpowers in Marvel series She-Hulk. She-Hulk takes a page from the WandaVision Disney Plus MCU playbook and veers toward a genre bender. But where WandaVision felt like a take on sitcoms, She-Hulk instead is a sort of Boston legal-esque superhero legal comedy. The series focuses on Jennifer Walters, an attorney and cousin of Bruce Banner. She gets Hulk powers and then the show really takes off from there. It's fun, funny, and really rides on the back of its cast, keeping episodic stories. Just wait until you see what the show does with the return of Emil Blonsky, The Abomination, Star Wars, and Ursep. 22. Disney Plus Diego Luna reprises his Rogue One role as rebel spy Cash and Andor in this Star Wars series. I can hear you trolling already. Another Star Wars show on Mickey Mouse Plus. What? It's not over already. Is Luke Skywalker in it? I swore off Star Wars after JJ and Ryan. I hear you. Really, I do. I sat through the book of Boba Fett, but Andor, the Rogue One prequel that follows Diego Luna's cash in Andor, may very well end up as the best TV series on Disney+. Plus. At long last, Andor sees the Star Wars verse trade cameos and canon for a damn good story. Luna somehow doubles the intensity of his Rogue One turn, showing every bleeding bit of his slow-burning resistance to the Empire. And in Denise Go and Kyle Soller's villains, we have very against the grain Star Wars batty performances. Think less Grandpappy Palpatine and more Teacher's Pet. I'll raise a glass of blue milk to that. House of the Dragon Og. 21. HBO Game of Thrones Pre- Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power Sept. 2. Amazon Prime Video Amazon has put unheard of amounts of cash into a new TV prequel series based on J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, entitled The Rings of Power. Whether it's good television or bad television, Rings of Power was always bound to be one of the biggest small-screen events of the year. Luckily, after an advanced screening, Esquire can heartily confirm this is good television. Great television, even. This behemoth prequel to Lord of the Rings turns back the clock thousands of years to the Second Age, a time of wealth, war, discovery, and so much more. Lavishly made by a team that clearly reveres Tolkien, Rings of Power is enthralling, visually spectacular, and appropriately mythic. Have fun getting lost in Middle-earth. The Crown, Season 5 Netflix Imelda Staunton takes the throne as an older Queen Elizabeth II in the fifth season of The Crown. Star Wars, The Mandalorian, Disney Plus Baby Yoda and The Mandalorian return for more Star Wars action. The Last of Us, HBO 2013 video game The Last of Us gets adapted in this tale of a teenager navigating a zombie apocalypse with the help of a grizzled smuggler played by Pedro Pascal. Craig Mazin, creator of HBO's bleak hit Chernobyl, is in charge. Star Trek, Lower Decks, Season 3. Paramount plus the junior officers of Star Trek. Lower Decks boldly go into trouble again in a third season in 2022, with a fourth already confirmed. Interview with the Vampire. Nearly three decades after the fatal misfire starring Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise, devotees of Anne Rice's immortal gothic novel are finally getting the interview with the vampire they deserve. Opulent, graphic, an unabashedly erotic, Rollin Jones adaptation tells the familiar tale of two undead lovers caught in a bad romance, with some smart updates. The bulk of the story is set not in the colonial New Orleans of 1791, but rather in 1910. In this roaring city, Louis is not a white Creole plantation owner, as in Rice's telling, but a black businessman running a saloon in the Red Light District, where he wrestles with his sexuality and faces countless racist brutalities. Let the tale seduce you, just as I was seduced, Louis advises. It's as good a thesis statement for interview with the vampire as any. The rehearsal. Nathan Fielder is a mad genius. The comedian. Prankster not only won our hearts by being one of the most awkward guys on reality television, but his genius schemes have also proven success. His latest batch at Idea, an acting school that practices following around and mimicking strangers using what he calls the Fielder method, was even put into use in another form by Christian Bale for Amsterdam. Bringing these skills to the people on the rehearsal, Nathan helps real people live out stressful conversations or experiences in elaborate role-playing scenarios that keep track of every word and every potential set detail. Even with all that planning, however, Nathan quickly leans that nothing ever goes according to plan, especially when he becomes directly involved in the process. Dairy Girls After three uproarious seasons, Netflix's winsome coming-of-age comedy about teenagers growing up in Northern Ireland during the Troubles has come to an end. 
And what a marvelous ending it was. Season 3 sees the gang stressing about exams, grades, and the unknown future as they prepare to graduate from their Catholic high school. Familiar hijinks abound. But in its final season, Dairy Girls takes on a sobering new tone, wrestling with big questions about the forces that push us over the threshold of adulthood. Long live the Dairy Girls. Andor, I can hear you trolling already. Another Star Wars show on Mickey Mouse Plus. What, it's not over already. Is Luke Skywalker in it? I swore off Star Wars after J.J. and Ryan. I hear you. Really, I do. I sat through the book of Boba Fett. But Andor, the Rogue One prequel that follows Diego Luna's cash in Andor, may very well end up as the best TV series on Disney+. Plus. At long last, Andor sees the Star Wars verse trade cameos and canon for a damn good story. Luna somehow doubles the intensity of his Rogue One turn, showing every bleeding bit of his slow-burning resistance to the Empire. And in Denise Go and Kyle Soller's villains, we have very against-the-grain Star Wars baddie performances. Think less Grandpappy Palpatine and more Teacher's Pet. I'll raise a glass of blue milk to that. Station 11. Station 11 may have started in 2021, but it wrapped up in 2022, so we're counting it. Based on the novel of the same name, Station 11 may seem like a tough watch right now, being about a deadly pandemic and all, but it actually turns into one of the most uplifting, touching, and intensely built character studies in recent TV history. The entire cast, particularly Mackenzie Davis, Hymish Patel, and Matilda Lawler, among others, are absolutely fantastic. You have to stick through some moments where it seems like the show is spinning its wheels a bit, but it all pays off in the end. Yellow Jackets, another one that was on our 2021 list but wrapped up in 2022, Yellow Jackets is simply one of the buzziest and most intriguing shows to come along in recent years. Imagine the intrigue and mystery of Lost, combined with Lord of the Flies, and then mixed with kind of a then and now it or stand by me vibe, but distinctly 1996. Led by Melanie Linsky, Tawny Cypress, Juliette Lewis, and Christina Rixi, the show has stellar casting across the board, an incredible soundtrack and is just a great, great watch. Yellow Jackets is coming back for season 2, and can't come back soon enough. What we do in the shadows. Everyone's favorite Staten Island vampires are back and better than ever in the gut-busting fourth season of FX's supernatural mockumentary. After the season 3 finale scattered everyone to the winds, season 4 reassembles the characters around three harebrained schemes. Nadia's quest to open a vampire nightclub. Laszlo's journey as a harried parent to baby Colin Robinson. And Nariel hasn't improved Tumpton and Wyatt Russell, among others. The Staircase In the very, 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 very crowded 2022 field of based on a true story crime drama, The Staircase stands above the rest of the crop as the best of the bunch. Come for the mystifying and confounding story around Kathleen Peterson's death. Stay for one of the best TV performances you'll ever see from Colin Firth as her possibly guilty husband, Michael Peterson. The rest of the cast, including Michael Stuhlbart, Parker Posey, Patrick Schwarzenegger, Sophie Turner, and more, is exceptional across the board. Obi-Wan Kenobi Gonna be completely real for a minute. The Obi-Wan show was a little disappointing. But the good parts are really good. Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi is a joy, and the show makes good use of Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader. And some of the moments shared between. Those two are worth the price of admission for Star Wars fans alone. Ms. Marvel Ms. Marvel started off really unique, kind of settled into being fairly standard Marvel fare in the middle, and really had a great conclusion, which is just about all we can ask for. Iman Vellani, who plays the Pakistani-American superhero Kamala Khan, MS. Marvel is an absolute delight in this series. And while her superhero origin story is fun, the real best parts of this series are the rich relationships we see her share with her friends, and especially her parents. It's the first Marvel series since WandaVision that's actually made us feel some real emotion. The Bear This year's version of Ted Lasso or The Queen's Gambit is probably The Bear. A super fast-paced half-hour dreamy about a restaurant in Chicago. The premise is simple enough, but after an episode or two you will be fully sucked into this engrossing story of a world-class chef who returns to Chicago to run his family's sandwich shop following his brother's unfortunate death. You'll burn through the bear. Not only is it one of the best shows of the year, but the music is great and these episodes move fast. Good news, chefs, season 2 is already on the way. A league of their own. Amazon's swing at telling the story of the first All-American Girls Professional Baseball League is less an adaption of the original 1992 A League of Their Own film and more Christopher Pike in novel of the same name. Midnight still leans horror, but likely have more of a Stranger Things feel than any of Flanagan's previous projects. The story is simple enough. Seven terminally ill young people meet every night at the hospice home they live in to tell scary stories and reach a pact. The first of them to die will have to communicate with the rest of them from the great beyond. 
Horror fans will be thrilled to see Heather Langenkamp as the charismatic doctor of the hospice, while Flanagan, as always, brings back a few of his old friends, Zach Guilford, Matt Beadle, and Samantha Sloyan all return from Midnight Mass. The White Lotus, Sicily. Okay, we know what you're thinking. The White Lotus isn't a new show. It already had a whole season and won a bunch of awards. What gives? Well, I'll tell you what gives. There's a new season with a whole new story set in Sicily. It's The White Lotus, and it has the same vibe as the first season, but it's totally different. The cast includes the likes of Aubrey Plaza, Theo James, F. Murray Abraham, and Michael Imperioli, and it's great. If you love TV, you need to watch The White Lotus, Sicily. Wednesday. Tim Burton is directing and executive producing Wednesday, a series centered on Wednesday Adams of the Adams family during her years in high school at the Nevermore Academy. As she masters psychic powers, stops a killing spree, and solves a supernatural mystery. What a sentence. As if that didn't sound great enough, Wednesday is going to be played by Jenna Ortega, an actress quickly emerging as perhaps our greatest modern scream queen, while only turning 20 years old this year. And in another perfect bit of casting Catherine Zeta-Jones is playing Morticia Adams. This will also be Gwendolyn Christie's second great genre show role of the year, coming on the heels of The Sandman. Sold. Wednesday. Tim Burton is directing and executive producing Wednesday, a series centered on Wednesday Adams of the Adams family during her years in high school at the Nevermore Academy. As she masters psychic powers, stops a killing spree, and solves a supernatural mystery. What a sentence. As if that didn't sound great enough, Wednesday is going to be played by Jenna Ortega, an actress quickly emerging as perhaps our greatest modern scream queen, while only turning 20 years old this year. And in another perfect bit of casting Catherine Zeta-Jones is playing Morticia Adams. This will also be Gwendolyn Christie's second great genre show role of the year, coming on the heels of The Sand. Sold. Wednesday. Tim Burton is directing and executive producing Wednesday, a series centered on Wednesday Adams of the Adams family during her years in high school at the Nevermore Academy. As she masters psychic powers, stops a killing spree, and solves a supernatural mystery. What a sentence. As if that didn't sound great enough, Wednesday is going to be played by Jenna Ortega, an actress quickly emerging as perhaps our greatest modern scream queen, while only turning 20 years old this year. And in another perfect bit of casting Catherine Zeta-Jones is playing Morticia Adams. This will also be Gwendolyn Christie's second great genre show role of the year, coming on the heels of The Sand. Sold. Abbott Elementary. Every time someone says Network is dead a series like Abbott Elementary comes along. The half-hour comedy from creator Quinta Brunson isn't trying to reinvent the wheel. Instead, it keeps things simple, and in doing so has become one of the funniest feel-good series in years. Set in an elementary school in Philadelphia, it follows a crew of primary school teachers just trying to get by on what little the government will give them. It also doesn't help that they have a objectively terrible principal standing in their way at almost every turn. Severance. If there's a show that's perfectly nailed the surreal vibes of 2022, it's Severance. Following an office where your work memories are separated from your personal memories upon arrival and dismissal sounds like perfect corporate strategy, right? The show explores the many ways in which we split ourselves in half, especially the parts that refuse to stay put. Somebody somewhere. It's hard to put somebody somewhere into words. It's less like watching a story and more like watching an experience. Bridget Everett shines as a woman who is trying to find grace and acceptance amid a ton of grief and sadness. Raw and unfiltered, the series is part comedy, part drama, and entirely too realistic for anyone who has ever had dreams of leaving their hometown. As we see it, Jason Kadams, How Dare You, the new series from the Friday Night Lights and Parenthood creator debuted on Amazon earlier this year, following three autistic young adults as they wade out into the world with the assist of their aide, played by Sosie Bacon. The series has heart, honesty, and a willingness to bring the world of life on the spectrum into the mainstream. That the three leads are all played by autistic performers makes the point perfectly. Pam and Tommy There are several intriguing things about Pam and Tommy. The CGI penis, a scheming Hollywood player in Roku's gender flip take on the 90 seconds movie Swimming with Sharks. Under the Banner of Heaven FX true crime drama Under the Banner of Heaven from Oscar-winning creator Dustin Lance Black and starring Andrew Garfield and Daisy Edgar Jones, explores a 1984 murder in Utah that strikes at the heart of a detective's Mormon faith. The Dropout Hulu Silicon Valley entrepreneur Elizabeth Holmes founded her company Theranos on Lies, and a true story adapted into Hulu series The Dropout stars Amanda Seyfried as Holmes. Killing Eve Season 4 Feb 27 BBC America The final season of this riveting spy thriller airs on BBC America and Amped, as Eve seeks revenge, while Villanelle tries to prove she's not a monster. Disney Plus The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder Feb. 23. Disney Plus drop in on Penny Proud and her raucous folks in The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder, a return to the animated series which ran from 2001 to 2005. 
guest stars include Lizzo, Lil Nas X, Tiffany Haddish, Lena Waithe, Anthony Anderson and Eva Longoria. Showtime, Super Pumped, The Battle for Uber Feb. 22. Showtime from the people behind Billions. Super Pumped is another tale of wealthy people behaving badly, but this time it's a true story. Joseph Gordon-Levitt stars as ruthless Uber founder Travis Kalanick, with Uma Thurman as Ariana Huffing, in 1970s Los Angeles. An earnest young feminist joins forces with a low-rent publisher to create the first erotic magazine for women. Katrina Marcinowski, HBO Max. Minx, HBO Max in 1970s Los Angeles. An earnest young feminist joins forces with a low-rent publisher to create the first erotic magazine for women. Epics, from Feb. 20. Epics Harold Perrineau investigates the mystery of a nightmarish town in middle America that traps all those who enter. Until the sun goes down and the monsters emerge. Daisy Jones and the Six. Amazon Prime. Taylor Jenkins reads best-selling novel about a 70 seconds rock group dealing with addiction and love triangles during the making of an album is getting a series adaptation. While the book is written in an oral history format, the show will play like a documentary featuring Riley Coe in the titular studying abroad in Sicily and finds the dream life they've built for themselves altered when he is diagnosed with cancer. Gremlin and his security detail. Butler, Alfred Pennyworth, meeting the two five years further into the future where a new era of superheroes and villains has dawned. The Power, Amazon Prime. Naomi Alderman is the creator and executive producer of Amazon Prime's upcoming series about her own 2016 novel The Power, a composite story about women suddenly developing an electrical current in their bodies and the shift in society's power dynamics that it brings. Reed Morano will direct, and Leslie Mann, Oli Cravalho, Rain Wilson, John Leguizamo, and many others will star in the feminist sci-fi thriller. Titans, HBO Max. The young heroes in season 4 of this Teen Titans series seem to be facing a new big bad, Lex Luthor. IDK, maybe you've heard of him. The Watcher, Netflix, another Ryan Murphy and Ian Brennan production headed to Netflix this year. The Watcher is inspired by a true story, first covered in the cut, about a couple who bought their dream house in New Jersey, only to be stalked and receive threatening letters from someone signed The Watcher. Naomi Watts, Bobby Cannavale, and Jennifer Coolidge lead the cast. The White House Plumbers, HBO. In this five-part historical drama, Woody Harrelson and Justin Thoreau will portray E. Howard Hunt and G. Gordon Liddy, two members of the Nixon White House and Watergate orchestrators who inadvertently led to the downfall of the presidency. Lena Headey, Dom Mull Gleason, and Ike Barinholtz are also among the cast. The Witty Lotus, Sicily, HBO. It's time to pack your bags and check into vacation. HBO's Emmy-nominated comedy The White Lotus is coming back. The show will be taking on an anthology format going forward, focusing on a whole new crew of wealthy travelers as they more or less enjoy their stay at a different White Lotus resort, season 2 being in Italy. Aubrey Plaza, Haley Lou Richardson, Michael Imperiali, and Theo James are among the stacked new cast. Thankfully, we'll see two familiar faces from season 1, Jennifer Coolidge's hilarious Tanya and her new man Greg, played by John Grise. The Witcher, Blood Origin Netflix, The Witcher was a huge hit on Netflix, and two seasons in, the fans are craving more lore. The Witcher, Blood Origin will follow a new band of heroes 1,200 years before the events of The Witcher and Re October 6, did breakout true crime documentary abducted in plain sight crawl under your skin when it hit Netflix. Well, now a dramatization of the harrowing story of how Jan Broberg was repeatedly abducted and abused by a family friend is on the way. McKenna Grace will play Broberg in her teenage years. Jake Lacey will portray her abductor, and Anna Paquin and Colin Hanks round out the rest of the cast. Walker, Independence. The CW, October 6, a spin-off prequel of The CW's Walker, itself a reimagining of the classic 90 seconds series Walker, Texas Range, is set in the 1,800 seconds as wealthy Bostonian Abby Walker's husband is murdered on a trek out west, leading her into a cat-and-mouse game with a sly con man in Independence, Texas. The Midnight Club. Netflix, October 7. Just keep the Mike Flanagan spooky series coming. Netflix. The latest from The Midnight Mass and The Haunting Creator is an adaptation of Christopher Pike's popular book series, set at a hospice clinic where a group who call themselves The Midnight Club meet to tell scary stories and vow to try to contact the others, whoever dies first. American Gigolo. Showtime, September 11th. Paul Schrader's 1980 male escort film starring Richard Gere becomes a TV series starring number one hottie John Bernthal for Showtime. It's something of a sequel series that is nonetheless set in the present day, following Bernthal's version of Julian K. after he gets out of jail. Expect abs and steaminess in meditations on masculinity. The Handmaid's Tale, Hulu, September 14. Given the current events, Hulu's adaptation of Margaret Atwood's dystopian novel continues to become even more frightening to watch, but nevertheless, the show is coming back. 
The season kicks off with Elizabeth Moss June on the run. Having killed Commander Waterford, but still determined to see through the revolution she started. Vampire Academy, Peacock, September 15. There really can never be enough teen vampire entertainment, right? To give fans of Rachel Mead's popular Vampire Academy book series something to sink their teeth into after a poorly received 2014 movie, a series adaptation is on the way. The supernatural drama follows two young women as they prepare to enter royal vampire society. Best in Doe, Hulu, September 19th. If you love pizza, this reality series is bound to make you hungry. The show sees pizza obsessives, from big-time chefs to slice connoisseurs, in competition to show off their pizza-making skills. Fan favorite from Bachelor Nation Wells Adams hosts, Habit Elementary, ABC, September 21st. Do you hear that? That's the school bell and shouts of glee because school is back in session at Abbott Elementary. Quinta Brunson's hit network sitcom will make a quick return to TV this fall after premiering in winter 2021. Like season 1, new episodes will hit streaming on Hulu the following day after they air. The Kardashians Hulu, September 22nd It's the Kardashians. They're back. At this point you probably know what you're getting. But now Pete Davidson is making appearances in the show. This season will also deal with the legal fracas with Black China. Reasonable Doubt Hulu, September 27 Last sharpest defense attorney Jack Stewart plays fast and loose with loopholes in the law in this legal drama produced and directed by Kerry Washington. When Jax finds herself as the one needing legal representation, she'll use everything she's learned to get out of her predicament. The Good Fight, Paramount Plus, September 8th. Time to say goodbye to the staff and many weirdos in the circle of Reddick, Lockhart, and Associates. This spin-off of The Good Wife from showrunners Robert and Michelle King is coming back for a sixth and final season. In staying true to form, expect The Good Fight to take on current events with its distinct wit. Last Light, Peacock, September 8th. Based on Alex Scarrow's best-selling book, Last Light is set in the aftermath of a global apocalypse that has halted the flow of the world's oil supply. But this is no natural disaster. People are behind this catastrophe, and they'll do anything to keep their existence and their power a secret. Cobra Kai, Netflix, September 9. Get ready for another action-packed chapter in this Karate Kid spin-off. Season 5 picks up right where Season 4 left off, with John Kreese in prison, Terry Silver scheming to take over the Karate Empire and Daniel LaRusso teaming up with Chosen Taguchi to try to take him down. Gutsy, Apple TV Plus, September 9. This intimate docuseries from Hillary and Chelsea Clinton, based on their bestseller The Book of Gutsy Women, features interviews with trailblazing women like Kim Kardashian, Jane Goodall, and Megan Thee Stallion who explain what it takes to be successful in the modern world. Everything I Know About Love, Peacock, August 25th. If you need to read about love in its many forms and flaws, British writer Dolly Alderton should be your go-to. In 2020, she published Ghosts, her first novel that skewers current dating culture, but before that, in 2018, she wrote a National Book Award-winning memoir Everything I Know About Love, about her and her friends in all their messy 20 seconds glory. It's heartbreaking, uplifting, and has a killer mac and cheese recipe, so it's no wonder that it has been adapted into a TV show. Starring Belle Powley and Emma Appleton as college besties Maggie and Bertie, as they navigate their early 20 seconds through their friendship, roommates, and how everything changes when Bertie ends up with a boyfriend. House of Ho, HBO Max, August 25th. The reality series about the wealthy Vietnamese American Ho family is back for more laughs and drama. After season 1 introduced viewers to Bin and Hugh and their children, the 10 episode season 2 will introduce extended members of the Ho dynasty, Little Demon, FXX, August 25th. Little Demon might be the most Aubrey Plaza show to ever exist. In the dark animated comedy, Plaza voices a woman who was impregnated by the devil 13 years ago and is just trying to live as normal a life as possible with her antichrist daughter in Delaware. Demons, obviously, won't allow for any of that. Mike, Hulu, August 25th. Steve Rogers, the writer of I, Tanya, turns his attention to another infamous sports figure with Mike, a dramatized Hulu limited series about Mike Tyson. Moonlight's Trevay Netflix project should be on your radar. Shannon Tyndall, the creator of Cubo and the Two Strings, a Roman writer and Coraline designer, and Peter Ramsey, one of the directors of Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse, will co-pilot the series, adapted from William Joyce's 2016 book Ollie's Odyssey, about a cute plushy toy looking for its boy. Jonathan Groff, Mary J. Blige, Tim Blake Nelson, Gina Rodriguez, and Jake Johnson are among the voice cast, a league of their own. Amazon Prime, August 12th. Since Broad City ended in 2019, missing the presence of Alana Glazer and Abby Jacobson on our television screens has been a regular pastime. Jacobson, alongside co-creator Will Graham, returns to the small screen with an adaptation of the beloved baseball film A League of Their Own. 
introducing new characters and storylines. It will follow a diverse group of women forming a baseball team during World War II, with a stacked cast including Jack Opson, Darcy Carton, Roberta Colindres. The recently released trailer promises plenty of action, both athletically and sapphically. Never have I ever. Netflix, August 12th. Oh, Devi. Bevy and Daxton shippers are about to have a lot more drama to get worked up over, now that Mindy Kaling's charming teen comedy Never Have I Ever is returning for season 3. Don't worry that this will be the last installment of the series, though. Kaling confirmed that it'll be back for a fourth and final season, too. This Fool. Hulu, August 12th. Stand-up comedian Chris Estrada is making a series, formerly titled Punk Ass Bitch, based on his own life, about a 30-something who still lives at home and works at a non-profit called Hugs Not Thugs, which rehabilitates former gang members. Jonathan Groff and Fred Armisen are among the executive producers. Legacy, the true story of the La Lakers. Hulu, August 14. The other Lakers series that premiered this year, HBO's Winning Time, had a lot of haters within the basketball team's camp. For a non-fiction version of the saga franchise's rise to greatness, there's this Hulu documentary series, Tales of the Walking Dead, AMC, August 14th. As it is a show about zombies, it seems fitting that the Walking Dead literally will not die. Seriously, how many spin-offs of the AMC hit are there at this point? Tales is an all-new one in an anthology, each episode focusing on a different character in the apocalyptic universe. Expect to see alum like Samantha Morton, as well as newbies like Olivia Munn, Terry Crews, and Parker Posey. Leaks halls of Pierpoint to see what Harper, Eric, Rob, and Yasmin are up to, with new cast members like Jay Duplass also joining. Reservation Docs Hulu, August 3rd The FX and Hulu series about a group of teens on an Oklahoma Native American Paper Girls. Prime Video Stranger Things fans should check out this TV version of an acclaimed comic about 80 seconds teenagers caught in a time-traveling war. The Sandman Og. 5, 2022. Netflix based on Neil Gaiman, attorney at law Og. 18. Disney Plus orphan black star Tatiana Maslany is Jennifer Walters, a lawyer with green superpowers in Marvel series She-Hulk. She-Hulk takes a page from the WandaVision Disney Plus MCU playbook and veers toward a genre bender. But where WandaVision felt like a take on sitcoms, She-Hulk instead is a sort of Boston legal-esque superhero legal comedy. The series focuses on Jennifer Walters, an attorney and cousin of Bruce Banner. She gets Hulk powers and then the show really takes off from there. It's fun, funny, and really rides on the back of its cast, keeping episodic stories. Just wait until you see what the show does with the return of Emil Blonsky, The Abomination, Star Wars, and Recep. 22. Disney Plus Diego Luna reprises his Rogue One role as rebel spy Cash and Andor in this Star Wars series. I can hear you trolling already. Another Star Wars show on Mickey Mouse Plus. What? It's not over already. Is Luke Skywalker in it? I swore off Star Wars after JJ and Ryan. I hear you. Really? I do. I sat through the book of Boba Fett. But Andor, the Rogue One prequel that follows Diego Luna's Cash and Andor, may very well end up as the best TV series on Disney+. Plus. At long last, Andor sees the Star Wars verse trade cameos and canon for a damn good story. Luna somehow doubles the intensity of his Rogue One turn, showing every bleeding bit of his slow-burning resistance to the Empire. And in Denise Go and Kyle Soller's villains, we have very against the grain Star Wars baddie performances. Think less Grandpappy Palpatine and more Teacher's Pet. I'll raise a glass of blue milk to that. House of the Dragon Og. 21. HBO Game of Thrones prequel The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power Sept. 2. Amazon Prime Video Amazon has put unheard of amounts of cash into a new TV prequel series based on J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, entitled The Rings of Power. Whether it's good television or bad television, Rings of Power was always bound to be one of the biggest small-screen events of the year. Luckily, after an advanced screening, Esquire can heartily confirm this is good television. Great television, even. This behemoth prequel to Lord of the Rings turns back the clock thousands of years to the Second Age, a time of wealth, war, discovery, and so much more. Lavishly made by a team that clearly reveres Tolkien, Rings of Power is enthralling, visually spectacular, and appropriately mythic. Have fun getting lost in Middle-earth. The Crown, Season 5 Netflix Imelda Staunton takes the throne as an older Queen Elizabeth II in the fifth season of The Crown. Star Wars, The Mandalorian, Disney Plus Baby Yoda and The Mandalorian return for more Star Wars action. The Last of Us, HBO 2013 video game The Last of Us gets adapted in this tale of a teenager navigating a zombie apocalypse with the help of a grizzled smuggler played by Pedro Pascal. Craig Mazin, creator of HBO's bleak hit Chernobyl, is in charge. Star Trek, Lower Decks, Season 3. Paramount plus the junior officers of Star Trek, Lower Decks boldly go into trouble again in a third season in 2022, with a fourth already confirmed. Interview with the Vampire, 
Nearly three decades after the fatal misfire starring Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise, devotees of Anne Rice's immortal gothic novel are finally getting the interview with the vampire they deserve. Opulent, graphic, and unabashedly erotic, Rollin Jones' adaptation tells the familiar tale of two undead lovers caught in a bad romance, with some smart updates. The bulk of the story is set not in the colonial New Orleans of 1791, but rather in 1910. In this roaring city, Louis is not a white Creole plantation owner, as in Rice's telling but a black businessman running a saloon in the red light district, where he wrestles with his sexuality and faces countless racist brutalities. Let the tale seduce you, just as I was seduced, Louis advises. It's as good a thesis statement for interview with the vampire as any. The rehearsal. Nathan Fielder is a mad genius. The comedian. Prankster not only won our hearts by being one of the most awkward guys on reality television, but his genius schemes have also proven success. His latest batch at Idea, an acting school that practices following around and mimicking strangers using what he calls the Fielder Method, was even put into use in another form by Christian Bale for Amsterdam. Bringing these skills to the people on the rehearsal, Nathan helps real people live out stressful conversations or experiences in elaborate role-playing scenarios that keep track of every word and every potential set detail. Even with all that planning, however, Nathan quickly leans that nothing ever goes according to plan, especially when he becomes directly involved in the process. Dairy Girls After three uproarious seasons, Netflix's winsome coming-of-age comedy about teenagers growing up in Northern Ireland during the Troubles has come to an end. And what a marvelous ending it was. Season 3 sees the gang stressing about exams, grades, and the unknown future as they prepare to graduate from their Catholic high school. Familiar hijinks abound. But in its final season, Dairy Girls takes on a sobering new tone, wrestling with big questions about the forces that push us over the threshold of adulthood. Long live the Dairy Girls. Andor. I can hear you trolling already. Another Star Wars show on Mickey Mouse Plus. What? It's not over already. Is Luke Skywalker in it? I swore off Star Wars after JJ and Ryan. I hear you. Really? I do. I sat through the book of Boba Fett. But Andor, the Rogue One prequel that follows Diego Luna's cash in Andor, may very well end up as the best TV series on Disney+. Plus. At long last, Andor sees the Star Wars verse trade cameos and canon for a damn good story. Luna somehow doubles the intensity of his Rogue One turn, showing every bleeding bit of his slow-burning resistance to the Empire. And in Denise Go and Kyle Soller's villains, we have very against-the-grain Star Wars baddie performances. Think less Grandpappy Palpatine and more Teacher's Pet. I'll raise a glass of blue milk to that. Station 11. Station 11 may have started in 2021, but it wrapped up in 2022, so we're counting it. Based on the novel of the same name, Station 11 may seem like a tough watch right now, being about a deadly pandemic and all, but it actually turns into one of the most uplifting, touching, and intensely built character studies in recent TV history. The entire cast, particularly Mackenzie Davis, Hymish Patel, and Matilda Lawler, among others, are absolutely fantastic. You have to stick through some moments where it seems like the show is spinning its wheels a bit, but it all pays off in the end. Yellow Jackets Another one that was on our 2021 list but wrapped up in 2022, Yellow Jackets is simply one of the buzziest and most intriguing shows to come along in recent years. Imagine the intrigue and mystery of Lost, combined with Lord of the Flies, and then mixed with kind of a then and now it or stand by me vibe, but distinctly 1996. Led by Melanie Linsky, Tawny Cypress, Juliette Lewis, and Christina Rixi, the show has stellar casting across the board, an incredible soundtrack and is just a great, great watch. Yellow Jackets is coming back for season 2, and can't come back soon enough. What we do in the shadows. Everyone's favorite Staten Island vampires are back and better than ever in the gut-busting fourth season of FX's supernatural mockumentary. After the season 3 finale scattered everyone to the winds, season 4 reassembles the characters around three hair brain schemes. Nadia's quest to open a vampire nightclub, Laszlo's journey as a harried parent to baby Colin Robinson, and Nandor's